You don't need enemies. You don't need, you don't need enemies. Of course you don't. You don't well, need enemies. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna go off and come back on in a moment. Hang on. Well, I've heard See? that about you. So. <laughs> I've heard that you do that. So oh, I don't think it's God. okay. When it comes back, we'll technically start the show, even yeah. though we're recording live. So yeah. today, fans, just to let everybody know, because we have our huge fan base, I'm going to smoke something by Drew Estate because my EGMs have not gotten here. Yeah. And, it's called, <laughs> and it's called The Feral by um, mm. Drew Estate. And I just lit it. Yeah. And um, it's an interesting cigar. You don't have to cut it. It's ready to go. Um, I think it's mm. a very full body. So I'm what kind of enjoying mean? it. What do you mean by it's ready to go and it's, you don't have to cut it. Because the head of the cigar has mm -hmm. a little opening. You don't have to cut it. It's got a little opening right there. Mm, you really? just suck it. That's, that's what I told my dates. It's the same <laughs> thing. So I like it. So it's called the Feral. It's very good. I'm enjoying. So, oh, right. And so we'll give a review of that. And you, of course, are smoking what I want to be smoking, which won't be here until this week or coming up, uh -huh. which is EGM. Yes, sir. So I was like, because I have to yes. go after the show. Hell, after fuck the show. hell. Fuck you all. Sorry. Oh, I thought it was. Mm. Didn't go oh. Thank you very much for joining in, His Highness, yeah. and, and being live. Fucking uh, hell. Hang on. What? You know, it's, yeah. it's tough being It's tough being you. <laughs> You, you don't you don't know the half of it. You don't know the half of it. I know. I see that. So since mm. I have a dinner to attend after, mm. imagine, the... imagine, imagine okay. a Muslim version of Woody Allen. Yeah. Okay, I got that. Is that you? That's you, huh? Oh. So wait a minute. You slept with your nanny? No, I'm in <laughs> neurosis. Oh, okay, neurosis. Okay. <laughs> So, it was me smoking an EGM. And Reza, what are you smoking? I'm, uh, I'm smoking an EGM as well. I would yeah, smoke, yeah. you know what? I would smoke an EGM, but they're not here he's yet. Not, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's smoking a okay, okay, Dorsey. Now he's going to remove the ban and claim it's an EGM. I've okay, seen that. Oh, the trick is gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can still see the Kedorsey ban behind this. Apparently, EGM will be sponsoring us. He's so he's sucking up now. So yeah. there you go. Listen, I don't get sold for any amount of money. Really? No, no. <laughs> yeah. so there we go. For me, it is the EGM Tiburon. Today. Very nice. Very nice. And my sampler got, is in, as, as I said on Thursday's call in New York. It just left Queens. So I'm assuming it should be here midweek next week. So next Saturday, I get to smoke EGM. So Stephen, I, I sent yeah. you a video of the sampler in the humidor. I know, I and I put and I posted that to the YouTube channel for all the fans yeah. to see. So, uh, no, yeah. I did that just so that you would like sort of whet your appetite, kind of thing. Because um, ah, thank you. Uh, that was a, it was a EGM mm -hmm. night in mm -hmm. Belgravia last mm -hmm. night. Yeah, uh -huh. and we're going to talk time. about that. We're going to talk about the EGM night, and now we're all I'm lit sorry. cigars. Our, our mean, fans well, are here. And you we know what also we're going to do? Davidoff night that happened on Wednesday night in number. Six. We could talk about that as well. Sure, we'll talk about Davidoff EGM. We suck up to everybody. That's how we are. Mm -hmm. While everyone's lighting their cigars, kids, we're going to start the show. So here we go. Yes, sir. This is Two O F Entertainment. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment, with over 100,000 YouTube subscribers and rapidly growing to be the most watched and podcast cigar show broadcast globally. The Habanos Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment. And we're back now. Hello, there we go. Welcome, everybody. It's a Saturday morning. We're live. It's two days after the Turkey Let's Day. Have any drinks. Yeah, and he doesn't have any pants. That's uh, yeah. thanks for sharing. So he's he's really discombobulated today. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I, 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 uh, I need some drinks. Well, well, well I'm, 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 I'm drinking, drinking my McCallum. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I'm, 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 all over, I'm all over the place today. We see that. Tell us something new. That's something mm -hmm. you already 
<laughs> so you, you both of you have turned into such haters. <laughs> real, real haters. Okay, gentlemen, yeah. I'm going to go yes. off screen for literally 30 seconds. We, we, we knew that. No, no, no. Well, Rather you know what's the with audio only. <laughs> I know. It. You know what's you know what's the best thing about this? It's like when you meet him in the real world, it doesn't mm -hmm. change. It's the same right. thing. That's the best it's part. Like, That's the best right, part. Right, right. It's always the best part. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be like I'll meet you at six. Yeah, Eight thirty is good. Um, so you know, it's, uh, it's just the way it is. All right, we're good. So when I'm in Dubai, we have I have a friend of mine, and he'll mm -hmm. and we'll we'll make dinner. He says, I will pick you up at the hotel at seven o'clock. I'm like, no problem. <laughs> and everybody that's with me is like, oh, we got to be ready. I'm like, yeah, well, nine o'clock. They're like, please, seven. <laughs> You'll see. At 7.15, the text will come in. He goes, dude, I'm running late. I'll see you at nine. I'm like, yeah, no problem. And her <laughs> so like, I'm like, I you. I'm like, just, I know. Relax. We don't, there's nothing we have to rush for. So yeah. it's, it's like, a, it's it's a, like, it's like inshallah, as, as, as is in Dubai or in uh, all the Arab countries, they say, Inshallah. So mm -hmm. that is primarily, well, technically that means if Allah permits, right? That's right. But everyone knows that actually means, yeah, we'll see to that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It means like uh, uh, we're two hours late. Yeah. It'll, or it'll it, happen sometimes. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get together. Not to worry. So, yeah. so Princess, tell us all about your big, your exciting night, which I posted the part of that this morning already on our channel in the Before shorts. We move on to the nights. Yes. Ooh. Well, first of all, if anyone no, wants hold to on, hold on, before hold on. We, you have to first tell us which nights are you going to talk about because you have Let's a lot of EGM. Yes. No, no, no. So, uh, the clues in the uh, the clue was in Stephen's introduction. Reza, tell us about your EGM night last night. All righty. Yeah. I thought you were going to talk about Davidoff first. We can, we can, we can, we can go on to that in part two of the yeah. uh, then, analysis. At, the end, at yes. the end, I will have something to talk about as well. Go oh, ahead. wow. We know that. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, as I said on the Herf call on Thursday, my job uh -huh. is to sit here and look pretty. I do that very well, and I contribute <laughs> nothing other than push some buttons. So please continue. You're pushing mine. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, someone's got to. <laughs> well, um, EGM night last night in right. Belgravia in London at Tom Tom's mm. Cigars. Uh, it was a pretty... Um, kind of ex exclusive sort of uh, high-end smokers. Uh, oh. Five masters of Habanos were there wow. last night, which they rarely assemble other than for these big uh, Cuban cigar events. They don't normally get together like that. Wow. Uh, Christian threw um, uh, a soiree. Let's call it a soiree Ooh. at uh, Tom Tom. Um, uh, if anyone is, before I say anything about the event, if anyone is interested in the visuals of the event, they just they just go to my Instagram, which you can see just yeah. there. Right. And the reposts, which will happen just there. Yeah. And That's just it. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you get lots of uh, me. It's all about moments. So it's lo 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 music <laughs> thrown in and this, that, the other. I, I can't do it any other way. I can't do I can't do the plain. Oh, here's a cigar. I can do it very, very rarely. But it's more about the moment, my enjoyment, the song that was playing in my head three hours earlier that will get played later on. And that's just the way I am. Anyway, so there were 11 people at the EGM event. We sampled two cigars, the EGM Robusto, which I believe Usman is smoking right now. Mm -hmm. no, I'm, um, I am, I'm smoking um, an EGM French edition. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, talking about that, did the Alexander whatever cigar make its way to the Alexander stage yet? Trump. Yeah, so, the, so I smoked yesterday evening. We, they cracked open the box of the Alexander Craft Edition. Yeah. Which is essentially uh, a bit like Versace and Fendi getting together or Adidas and Gucci getting together. What EGM have done, they've made a, a foray of their brand. I won't say less of a cigar, but more of a lifestyle kind of choice with yeah. a lifestyle ambassador guru, which is Andrew, uh, Alexander Kraft, who has a, right. has a huge following, apparently. And all the uh, sort of like the, the chitter chatter yesterday was that he has a huge following in Germany, uh, a huge following Nazis. of a uh, female following as well. Because uh, did, did he make it to the event last night? No, he didn't make it to the event last night. He's back in Monaco, but he will be coming over, I guess, in the next few weeks. 
uh, Ettore was there, uh, the, the, the owner of EGM Cigars, after whom those initials EGM uh, are, that, that is it, those, the initials of his name. Ettore Gabriel Mos something Moschili or something like that, yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, we, we sample both cigars. Um, uh, both uh, the, the Alexander Craft cigar was a little bit more robust in its yes. flavor. Uh, we were given um, a little bit of background. So the, these are both Dominican cigars. They're puros. They're completely Dominican yeah. cigars. And um, they had considered, in conjunction with Alexander, Ettore with uh, Alexander Craft, had considered w where they could get the most exclusive blend out of Dominican Republic. So their preferred original factory was in Santo Domingo. Eventually, they chose a factory in Santiago de los, de los uh, Caballeros, right. uh, which I've been to. Uh, Usman knows as part of the pro cigar kind of thing. I, um, uh, I haven't been to the exact factory where they, they made this cigar because it's a very small kind of niche factory. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to place themselves in the same bracket as Davidoff cigars. Wow. Okay. Right. That's okay. the bracket that they're aiming for. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean with the history of Davidoff cigars. What it means is there's a certain type of person that goes for a Davidoff cigar. Right. Uh, I, I guess what they've done is it's fairly obvious that in terms of if you're not smoking Cuban cigars and you go for non-Cuban cigars as an entry point into your cigar smoking journey, and God knows where that will be in 20 years' time, then you you go in from a price sensitivity point of view. You're not going to spend 80 pounds on a cigar. You're going to spend 20, 30 pounds perhaps on a cigar. I'm talking about London market. Everywhere else is different, uh, different right? So, but they want the, that kind of reputability of the Davidoff cigar. And actually, in my opinion, um, let me show you. Steven, it's a good day. Both of us have to just smoke our cigars and look pretty. I know. So far, so good. Now, I'm enjoying now, it. Now, right. now, 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 this is the band of the Alexander Craft cigar yesterday. Can you see it? Very. Oh, mm -hmm. look at that. Oh, I'm going to cry. It's upside yeah, yeah. down. Sorry. It's upside oh, down. Well, now I'm, now I'm going to oh. cry. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see it? It's yes, beautiful. So, That's Jake, nice. A little, yeah, now it's better. Now, oh, my goodness. So basically, Don't... there's a picture of Alexander Craft's dog on there, which yes, is his kind of uh, his, his champion, his mascot, his buddy, his friend etc 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 if you saw the shape of the band i showed you just now it's almost the same shape as a davidoff band actually is that that mm -hmm. so thing. i think there's some brain fucking going on there a little bit okay. um uh, if i was to use a technical term i would call it brain fucking um <laughs> if i was to use a slightly uh more rugged term i'd say it's just a mind fuck Okay, it's a good. It's a good thing that you're a professional all the time. <laughs> so. The point being this. The point being this is their game in terms of marketing is a far more psychological game. Um, yes. and we had this discussion yesterday. You know about Mad Men and the marketing of Heinz right. without showing a ketchup bottle. You market the name and right. brand rather than the product, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because. Your product is not the is not the most you know the kick-ass product on the planet. Having said that, right. it's a product that delivers. So you don't want to oversell it. You don't want to undersell it. You want to sell it into the. You want to sell that concept. And with EGM, it's a lifestyle concept. Right. Uh, the lifestyle uh, uh, concept exists for two reasons in my mind. First of all, you've got to you've got to uh, uh, befuddle the the YouTube censors and the social media censors right, right. who who don't allow you to promote smoking. So there they they have you have to pitch the brand and lifestyle rather than the product because you can't really say buy this cigar. You can't do things like that, right? Otherwise, YouTube will cancel you. And the other reason is that it's a, perhaps a more powerful message lifestyle wise to to hit the younger audience, the 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 people who are uh, coming into the cigar smoking world with at the moment the 20 21 year olds 22 year olds where are they going to go mm. and also very much they uh Ettore spoke about the um uh the female audience because they're coming out with some products like the small uh uh, uh i think cigarellos cigarellos uh, cigarellos, cigarellos yeah. uh, tins of six uh, they talked about yeah. a whole range of products which i won't mention on here let them talk about them now now i know 
all the product ranges they're going to come out with. And um, uh, they'll be sending me all these products to sample ahead of time before Usman gets them so that finally I'm ahead of the game and ahead of the curve. <laughs> hey, I agree, but what about the Jew? What about the Jew in America? What is the Jew going to get? Is the Jew going to well, get you guys are in charge. You hands? can get it whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I forgot that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Never mind. We, we don't, you know the very, the very, 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 very passive aggressive on, uh, on your part. Yeah, like right yeah, yeah. in charge. But, oh, oh, it's the yeah. oh. But, You know, listen. I've, yeah. I've, come, I've come. I've come to. I've come. To, I've come to accept that you and Osman. Oh, here we go. Let me play the violin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 blushing. I've come. I've come to. A, I've come to a, a, a accept that you and Osman <laughs> are the cigar aficionado pros, and that the world comes to you too for I things. I humbly bow be before you. I humbly as you bow as you should you. as you should. You, but that's fine. That's for later. If, <laughs> if, we, if you had not given us this platform, we would not mm. have erupted. With this, uh, Absolutely. Uh, this, this uh, insubordination right. that we have for you, <laughs> and 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 I love it. And I will say that, and I, as people know, this is my this. I look forward to this every Saturday. Um, so even though I have to purchase my EGMs and purchase my other cigars, while you guys no, no, get no, like fifty no, million no, dollars on, for free, the Alexander Crafts are on me. All the the best part is I always me. purchase them. I do not yep. want to have any influence of that sort. So right. that somebody can say, oh, they're marketing. So I say whatever I want to say because I paid for it. Good. Right. It's and as simple as that. That's so I agree with that. I, I agree. He's bought and paid for it. I agree with that 100%. But to EGM and Davidoff, listen, we can also be bought. Now, please continue with the EGM. <laughs> well, <laughs> the EGM well, on thing. the EGM note, I'd like to yeah. ask Usman how his cigar is smoking. Yeah, Usman, can we have a close-up? All right, which one? Who do you want a close-up of? You or him? All right, first we'll do you. Is, hold on. First we'll do Riza. There's the RZA well, there, closer. There, there's my French edition. <laughs> yes, there's your French edition. Okay, we got <laughs> it. Finally, finally now. All <laughs> right, and now we're gonna do we're gonna do Usman's real edition of EGM. There you go. Beautiful. Look at what that. What an attractive very, looking band. Very. That is very pretty. Looking looking. pretty. It is. It is. And look at that cigar, the burn. That's it's a beautiful. Very clean no. cut. It's, 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 it's basically you know when you go into an Italian uh, delicatessen. Even the fucking can of tomatoes are designed properly, and that's 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 yeah, that that's kind an EGM. Of design, you know? yeah. It's 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 a very very even burn. Of course, that's of course true. that that it has a lot to do with the how I cut it. But yes, that's true. The construction is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we, I, I want to say this other thing about our show, which is good for the fans that are just watching for the first time. The modesty among the group is that we are, I know, right? We are, please. It's the modesty, the modesty here. down to it. Yeah, you, you, you can't even say how down to earth we are. So next week, I will be smoking I'm, I'm the EGMs. most down to earth. I'm oh, you're the you, most something, right? I'm the right. most down to earth. Yes. yes. Okay, so <laughs> what, else, what else is there about Alexander Crawford, EGM, that we need to know or the fans need to know before we go into the Davidoff night, and then, of course, Usman is going to actually teach us something. Oh, well, um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> the, the essential ta uh, take home for me from right. EGM night is that it is an accessible lifestyle product brand right. for a younger audience. Really? But, yeah. but, but also perhaps for an existing uh, Cuban uh, cigar smoking audience, including people like me, <clears throat> not every cigar, not every cigar in your sampler range is going right. to tick your boxes. Right. It only, only to be honest, only one has to, yeah. in my opinion, right? Only one has to. And for me, uh, we said this on the, on the last show. A couple shows, yeah. It's it's that Lancero, the the right. Encanto, Encanto, the slim, yeah. thin ring gauge one right. that has is, I won't say packed with flavor, but it gives you that that moment of pauses. Right, well, this is something different. This is something right. nice. This is something slightly chocolatey, cedary, a little right, bit right. more, uh, a, a little bit more uh, uh, complex than your standard Dominican. And most okay. Dominican cigars, to me, taste the same, to be very honest with you. To be very, mm. very, very honest with you. They just taste the same. I could not tell you the difference between one and the other other than the band that's on it. Okay. 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 So that's so they, uh, they have got a really good lifestyle product. Now, one of the controversies or one of the 
Uh, I use the word, this sort of mythic mythos thing that's kind of around EGM, at least I felt it, is this kind of association with Cuba. Because um, um, their, their marketing centered quite a, a, a lot around uh, this nightclub in Cuba where they hold parties and gatherings, et cetera, et cetera. Right. They Mexico. even have one of their cigars... Is it called El Blanco? Blanco, yeah, Blanco Havana. Blanco. Yeah, El right, Blanco. right. So there is this kind of mystique. I can only describe it as a mystique of there is some Cuban association. Now, a few months ago, I heard uh, that perhaps uh, I heard someone make a statement that that's the only non-Cuban sold in Cuba. Now he did. <laughs> no, no, he did. I just. Confirm if it is true and where it is done. Because gotcha. uh, Raza got to know about it, and Raza, uh, I guess, was con thinking that it is being available in Hotel National. So right. that's when I confirmed that it is not Hotel National, but it is the El Blanco Bar in Havana. Oh, that's Very exactly cool. right. Now that's okay. exactly right. Now, because I smoke around London, which which both of you know, <laughs> this <laughs> seems around to be. London, Tom, Tom. There seems, like to be, <laughs> there seems to be a little bit of resistance from some notable people that right. that's a true statement. Really? Yes. I mean, wow. uh, um, I have no problem speaking my mind, to be very honest with you, but right. um, uh, I'd have to have a mind before I spoke it. Oh. Um, the, you but, should have just confirmed it from Itore last night. I did. Okay. Well, did you have a, Etor, did you have a mind or confirmed. sold at the El Blanco? Now, Ettore confirmed that right. it's sold. And I said to him, there is some controversy. People just don't believe you. Right, right. Or mm -hmm. let's say, no, 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 no. I, 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 I misspoke. They don't, it's not that they don't believe him. They just don't, they can't believe, believe it. it. Right, they right. can't believe the concept of it. Let's put it that way, yeah. right? Well, it's fairly fucking obvious, isn't it? You go and take a photo there. And it says it's retailing and da, da, da. Mm -hmm. And that, that, yeah. dimension. but why hasn't anyone done that? Oh, in February, check that. Every February, there are like thousands of... Uh, I understand, but then why is there the resistance? If it's so evident, I've never seen anything, right? I've never seen anything. So the reason what I'm, what I'm trying to say is this is a slightly mythic, slightly sort of interesting uh, intrigue. It's a bit of an intrigue, and that intrigue is perhaps part of that marketing thread that EGM has caught on to that other no other non-Cuban cigars haven't. There's, you know, okay. people talk about lots of different cigars, but I never really ever see anyone smoking non-Cuban cigars in London Cigar Lounge, just perhaps a Davidoff from time to time. Right. I don't see it. I don't see anyone smoking anything else, really. Uh, so they're clearly not moving off the shelves. In other parts of the world, and especially places like America, yeah, the story yeah. is different. But that was my EGM flavor from last night. I had a very, very nice, very nice, very nice. evening. Um, uh, once again, you can check out the social medias for all the videos and photos and things. Here, and here I as well. Throughout yeah. The, yeah, throughout the day, um, perhaps I'll be putting some more up. Um, if anyone's interested, I'll send you bespoke stuff. Uh, but that is EGM. Over to Usman. Before, no, before, you, before Usman goes, before you go into Davidoff and Usman, let me just say something for America, if I may. Um, because with Donald Trump coming in, and I've spoken to Donnie, um, we're going to lift the embargo on Cuban cigars. It's true because I just said it on the Internet. So America now is going to take all the Cubans. Um, you guys will be stuck with them. You'll, you'll be stuck with Dominicans. Donnie and I are working a deal. Um, when, is, as we speak. When, is, when is he taking over? Donnie takes over on the 20th and on the 21st, the uh, Cuban embargo and cigars will be lifted. But don't uh, worry who, about who, that. Which 20th? 20th of December? No, of January. January. Yeah. Perfect. So we have got like one and a half months to save ourselves right. for the rest of the life. Okay, there fine. You go, we'll because after, after that, we're going to make stock. We're going to make stock. We're gonna make, stock, uh, stock yeah, up because we're going to make the, what the Chinese do like nothing. Yeah. No. Um, but it, the American cigars, you guys, you know, you know, you know the brands. You have Rocky Patel, you have CAO, which only makes one or two good ones. You have the Oliva, which you both hate, which on the hearth of one of the guys was smoking, which is funny. Um, yeah, no, I don't have, hate you. I just don't I, get it. Right. You have Davidoff. You have, I mean, you have the Drew Estate guys. You have all these cigars. We have French regionals. Yeah, fr right. You have, but my point is, is that, so in America, because we don't have um, uh, the wherewithal that we legally can bring in Cubans, 
and we or and people order them from wherever and they get them and whatever. But so we have to make do with what we have. Now there are some Dominican brands mm-hmm. that um, excellent smokes. They are flavorful. They're this and they're that. But for most guys who think they're cigar aficionados in America. Um, I would say, and I may be wrong, 90% of them are just doing because they think it's cool to smoke a cigar and it's some sort of status. There's not too many, if you will, Rizzas and Usmans, if you will, in America that I know of. Um, my Kirby's a, an aficionado, but that can tell you everything. Um, it's just like I like when I went and bought that Rocky Patel, right? I said to the guy, he goes, I bought a box. I'm like, mm-hmm. big deal. Does it, but tell me about the cigar. And he couldn't tell me anything about the cigar. So that's the mentality, unfortunately, over here. So the reason that this show I find good is because either you're a beginner or you're an aficionado, you always learn something. Now we're learning about EGM marketing. Later, we're going to learn the Davra. So it's just fascinating. Um, and at some point, you know, if you, you've never smoked in a Cuban, there's only certain Cubans I like, you know, like, uh-huh. you know, but not every Cuban is a winner. And I try I to agree. explain to people. I, I agree to that point. I totally yeah. agree to that point. I do, I do try and savor myself and get my hands on any and every Cuban that right. comes up or at the max, I, I try and do that at the max. Right. But after a couple of them, I decide whether it is something for me or not. <laughs> and that is why I always buy sticks first and boxes later. Yes. Because if I if I don't know uh, what the cigar is, there's no point spending money. And if it doesn't suit my palate or I don't like it, well, then we'll see to it. Yeah, that's why for me, my go-to Cuban anywhere in the world is always a part of Mm-hmm. It's just like, I know it's going to be a great smoke. Yeah. It's going to be wonderful. I've the H up in fifties that you had last week or the yeah, 54s yeah. or 56s all day long. Um, there's certain ones I will get because I know that whether it's in Dubai or London or wherever I'm smoking, that they're, they're, they're not, I can give them to someone and I'm not going to be embarrassed. Um, Absolutely. There are other places, you know, like even in America, when I go, the reason I, I'll go for like the four or five that I'm comfortable with is because I know they'll, for 90% of the time, they'll be a good smoke. Um, and I think last time I was in Dubai, they had EGMs, but I didn't know who they were. Um, mm-hmm. And so I didn't buy them. And they were at the uh, the Ritz on the beach. Um, yeah. Their cigar lounge has a whole bunch of EGMs. And I said, I've never heard of them. And if I would have known, I would have, you know, smoked them like a banshee. So my next trip to you're, Dubai, that's what I'll do. You're, you're actually better off not purchasing because... You did not end up paying three hundred dollars for a box, right, which right. is dollars. Yeah. So, and I can get it online from them, which is wonderful. Yeah. And my box will be here. So yeah. that was my little di- diatribe. I'm sorry. So, either Rizzo, you can tell us about Davidoff, or Osman, you can tell us whatever. But no, we have, Davidoff, we have Davidoff night. No, no, we talked about the Davidoff night. Raza, Raza, it's a Davidoff night again. No, 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 no. Because mm-hmm. mine is something else. So you're gonna go first. Well, what, is, what is yours? What is yours? Go on, go on. First, tell the Davidoff story. So, well. <laughs> The, well, I can't tell you the story. I can tell you how the sampling went on Wednesday please, evening. Please so do. Wednesday... What was the, tell us what was the event, where you were, who yeah. you were with, and all that. Well, you... I, was at, I was at number six Cavendish on of Wednesday evening for the... Uh, for the, uh, for <laughs> the, uh, that's the only reason. That's the only reason I said you were going to go because I didn't do Tom Tom. So he, yeah. he smoked around London, Tom London. Tom, and Tom, number Tom six. Cavin, <laughs> number six, Cavendish, Tom Tom, Cavendish, Tom Tom, Cavendish, Tom Tom. Run, Once run, in a while, he, right? Yeah, sometimes run, he run. ventures somewhere else, but not <laughs> often. Basically, in the eighties, in the eighties, in the eighties, I oscillated mm-hmm. between McDonald's and Burger King, and and I'm reliving that now. Oh, okay. With your cigars, I got it. I got you, it. You know, you, uh, everyone has a favorite bar, but everyone has a bar that they cheat on with from the first one. <laughs> and and it's it's that kind of I got it. Listen, they we're not judging you much. Like, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking in allegories. Yes, That's we got right. that. We, we, we got um, that. We understand it. Now, now go ahead, tell us the story. Tell us about the Davidoff evening at number so the six. Davidoff night, the Davidoff night was the year of the snake. Uh, so they oh. do Davidoff do a Zodiac series. I believe they've right. done eight Zodiac series over the last eight years. What they've done is just sort of two or three months uh, before the Chinese New Year, which is roughly sort of end of January. I believe right, end right. of January every year. August, yes, end of February. So the, the, the Chinese Zodiac is the various animals and mythical animals. So, for example, mm-hmm. drag, dragon is in there. 
Um, and for the last eight years, Davidoff have been making a cigar to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And they call it the Zodiac okay. Series. And what they've tried to do is with each model, so for like the Year of the Dragon, they've done Year of the, 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 the uh, Rabbit, Year of the Tiger, right? So each time they do a cigar, the cigar Vitola is different. Right. And some aspect or characteristic of their cigar kind of ties up with the animal or mythical animal that it represents. So, for example, Year of the Tiger had stripes on it within the wrapper. Am I right, Usman, about that? Yes, sir. So, like, you know, yeah. scratch it or, well, well, maybe scratches or the, the tiger print, however you want to take yeah, it, right? It, 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 it wasn't that good, though. In fact, I, 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 I don't know. I haven't had it. Really? I haven't had it. I'm unlike a, Usman, I don't really smoke non-Cubans, right. to be I'm, honest. I'm a Year of the than Tiger. EGMs. I'm, a, I'm a Year of the Tiger by birth. So when mm -hmm. they came out, I went to a store and I said, how are they guys? Oh, it's great. You've got to buy it. Well, it's like 50 bucks a stick. I said, all right, let me get three. Because it's kind of the, you know, the first one you're never sure about. The second one kind of gets you there. And then the third one, you either love it or hate it. Um, and I think I still have one of them left. It's um, very was, strange, actually, because for me, that was one of the Zodiac years, which I really loved. Okay. So I, I smoked the first one. And I, I was I was there, and uh, the gentleman who has the Davidoff distribution here in Pakistan, he offered me one, and I was like, no, no, I'm good. He was like, no, no, I'm just cut it, so you're going to smoke it. I was like, fine. All right. I was halfway through the cigar, and I said, do you have a box? And he was like, yes, because he was, like, pre-sold on the boxes. I still, I nicked him off, and I, I had to, like, arm twist him to get a box. Right, and right. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the box, the okay. cigar. Okay. They've ended, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed them. Stephen, did you smoke one stick? I smoked, um, I bought, I actually bought four. I smoked three. I have one left. And then there was another company. There's several companies that made Year of the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and I enjoyed the others better. Yeah, Placencia made that. Flor de Silva yep. made that, if I'm not wrong. And I love the Essencia one, by the way. That one I really enjoyed. That one I bought a box of. I enjoyed it that much. But Plis the Davidoff one just didn't. Good. Yeah. What 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 I'm enjoying even more is that you asked me to explain the Davidoff evening, but you're both talking about it. Okay, we're sorry. Please continue with sorry, the Davidoff evening. Oh, what were we thinking? thinking? What yeah. were we thinking? <laughs> yes, you got one in. Congratulations. You forgot. You forgot. <laughs> yes. So you're you're the snake. You broke the flow. I was getting, I was in this flow, and you just went. <laughs> Okay, go on. You asked the question. We answered. Go ahead. I didn't ask any fucking question. I, I had to ask a question in order to get my, right. get my so you're in. So you're at Davidoff. It's the year of the snake. You're no, at Cavendish. No, I was not at Davidoff. He was, was at number six, six Cavendish. He was six, the yeah. guy for Davidoff, year of the snake. Right. Go on, Raza. Go on. So Tell us. Was, so uh, what I was explaining yes. is that each of the Zodiac cigars has yeah. some characteristic. And then the, the second cigar I was going to reference was the year of the dragon cigar, which apparently was a large Vitola, and near the end of the 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 now I'm going to use the technical expression near the mouth of the cigar, right? The wrapper there was no wrapper, so it was sort of a, a a naked cigar. So when you light it, you get a sort of a a fiery burst. This is the hypothesis. I don't know if that worked. I've never smoked that cigar, but that was the explanation okay. given to me. Mm -hmm. Now I was very very lucky in this aspect at the number six event. That on the chair next to me in the sort of the VIP alcove, which they very kindly put me in, okay. was a gentleman called Roy Sommer. Now, Roy Sommer is the head of marketing for Davidoff Cigars. Wow. Okay. And we were having this cordial discussion before we lit up the cigars. And he kind of, he sort of leant over and he said, look, look out, look out for the speciality of this cigar. I said, what do you mean? And, and it was in that conversation he explained to me that sort of the Zodiac uh rationale right where well, the rationale right. is to sell more cigars but you know each cigar whatever whatever right. he said look out for the lemon and i said what the what the fuck do you mean lemon right so wind forward one hour 30 minutes into the smoke from the start mm -hmm. to maybe three quarters of that cigar not in thirds but three quarters of cigar i got the flavor of caramelized lemons at the back of my mouth Oh. And on the tip of my mouth, it was a very unusual, very likable, very enjoyable cigar. <coughs> Excuse me. It was a Lancero. 
Right. Uh, uh, so small ring gauge, relatively long. Uh, what length would that be? What's my seven inch? Seven inch cigar? What? The Lancero? The, yes. Well, it depends because the Lancero in Cubans uh, is a 38 or 39 and 40. Uh, and well, then, they match the Cuban Vitolas, so... No, no, but, they don't. No, they don't. Well, that, oh, that was, it was confirmed yesterday that all the non-Cuban cigars... Uh, 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 maybe, okay, maybe not from Davidoff, but anyway, go on. No, no, not from Davidoff. The other ones do, uh, not from Davidoff. Okay, okay. But yeah. throughout... Uh, so, because it was a Lancero, we were all encouraged, even the straight cutters were encouraged to punch cut this cigar to get a a more intense flavor rush from the aperture where we were smoking. Okay. And this cigar absolutely had the taste of caramelized wow. burnt lemons in my mouth. And, and I got that on the retro hill. I got that on my tongue. It was fabulous. Even the cocktail at number six, uh, right. two nights ago or three nights ago was uh, a Chartreuse and uh, um, uh, gin, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a lemon infused cocktail that really, really complemented uh, okay. that smoke. Um, that was a very unusual flavor profile. The question was raised how the hell did you get this flavor profile? And the answer was well, given that Davidoff owns its own tobacco farms, etc., 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 it's got since it's got uh, X number of um. Uh, flavors uh, to play with, the combination, the permutations of mix and match is about 7,000 different blends they can come Seven, Sorry, wow. 7 million different blends they can come up with. And therefore, somewhere in that 7 million, you're going to get this citrusy profile. Right. That was that was okay. perhaps that was perhaps the answer that most people could digest. Um, but I thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed the cigar. I thoroughly wow. enjoyed the education around the cigar. And I thoroughly enjoyed, uh, perhaps uh, uh, very much the most, was the pairing of the drink uh, uh, with the cigar that evening. It was absolutely outstanding. And that wow. really kind of made me think far more favorably about a cigar that mostly I've been, uh, a brand that I've been relatively dismissive of. Yeah. I think I'm going to try the year of the snake. Hopefully it's better than the year of the tiger. Now, now I'm excited about it. Now, before we move on to something else. Oh, here we go. I am going to, but I'm going to share another point of view. Like we, we just talked about the year of the tiger and you kind of uh, did not like it. I really liked it. Right, right. Uh, on the same way where Raza has uh, talked very good about it and, and, and has really liked the year of the snake. Right. I haven't smoked it yet, so I, 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 and they have not hit the market yet, so I don't know about it. But someone who's considered to be again a cigar authority uh, has written four books already, and is, his fifth book is coming up uh, in February. Uh, Aaron Sigmund. Uh, so Aaron Sigmund reviewed the same cigar last night as well, oh, okay. and on 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 his Instagram handle and on his Instagram posts, uh, he had put on some stories, for him, it was something, nah. And wow. he was like, maybe, maybe age does something good to it. But he was like, I am absolutely not impressed by the cigar and the price one has to pay for it. Gotcha. So that's that's the other side of the story or, or someone who's, who's claimed that. So let's see, I mean, everyone gets their own, that, that's the beauty of cigars. Everyone right. gets their own uh, flavor profile and their own perception and experience of a cigar and that is what makes it a unique thing and that is also something which brings us all close to each other thinking that okay this is this is what the difference of cigar lifestyle is correct correct that's, that's true you could have five guys smoke like the rock the rocky patel that i smoked that we talked yeah. about that i keep making fun of the guy with they were raving about it and i smoked it here on the show and i was like okay it's yeah. I, nothing there's nothing to it it's just expensive and you're paying for his name and it was, it was like nice all right great but yeah can i it's can just, i can, can i make a, a small comment small comment you may, on, sure on you can make as big a comment as you want it's a fucking good cigar try it <laughs> it's a fucking good cigar yeah and he gives it three fucks 
And that's the mushy. Regardless, it's a fucking good cigar. The only, the only, the only thing that I found that most people can kind of agree upon, generally speaking, is whether a cigar is bang for buck or not. Right, right. That that really like so. For example, a cigar could be fucking good, but if it's eight hundred pounds per stick. Yeah. It kind of nullifies your, you know, uh, to most people, it nullifies it uh, from, from, the, from the market. The problem I suspect with this particular cigar, now, the pricing of this cigar, as far as I understand, is between sort of 90 to 110 pounds per stick. This the, okay. the Davidoff Year of the Snake. Right, right. That's my understanding. Uh, I paid 80 pounds for the, the, the privilege of smoking that cigar, but that, that you know, as a cigar evening, uh, it, it's with a cocktail. It's it's right, right. kind of uh, um, uh, it's it's not at retail price. If you know what I mean, it's sort of like an entry price kind of thing. Yeah, right. But as cigars, and it's not com- it's not the most I I've smoked much 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 more third rate cigars, which Osman knows for more money. New World cigar. I guess right. everyone. I guess everyone knows you've already done that. Everyone on the- fucking knows my opinion on this, right? And I don't yeah. give two fucking hoots who knows. All right. Sounds good. That's okay. Yeah. Right. Um, you shouldn't uh, hold back how you feel. I, I, you really I, need I, to let I, it. Is, I'm quite a res- normally quite a reserved and diplomatic person, but sometimes I get <laughs> yes. agitated. Yeah. We can see. see the volcano. See, yeah. see, right. Do you recall a time when he has been diplomatic? Um, I think when he came out of the womb, I think that was uh, the only time, maybe. And then other than that, it's, it's, anyway, 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 anyway. About, the best thing about Raza is he would just say it the way he wants yeah. to say. It. Uh, like most like of it. us, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think on, on the Davidoff year of the snake, I think yeah. I don't want to put words in someone else's mouth, but, but a, a journalist um, and a, and a, an aficionado like Aaron Sigmund would be balancing in a lot of different factors. Right. right and would like so if that cigar was at a twenty dollar price point, it would be a really great cigar for the money. You know what I mean? Right. It changes. Yeah. It just changes the narrative completely. That's um, a big it, it, it's the price point that can make you look at a cigar very favorably or very right. you know uh, uh, adversely. Uh, yeah. I think that that price sensitivity is more and more featuring because it's become more and more apparent. Um, as as the cigar industry and the, the products in the cigar industry get, no, yep, the cigar guides took them out. What? Sorry. There you go. You're saying as the cigar industry gets more and more, and then you start. as it gets more vibrant, then you yeah. have the range of prices. You can go into a place like Tom Tom Number Six, Fumar, whatever it may be in London, right? You can buy a cigar. Uh, 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 it, it, uh, you could perhaps buy a cigar at a price point of $20 or 20 pounds per stick right. all the way up to 10,000 pounds per stick, depending yeah. on what you pick. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a big range for a product. Uh, 30, 40 years ago, if you bought a packet of cigarettes, a packet of cigarettes would cost three pounds, 50 all the way up to eight pounds. You know, the range was right. much smaller. So, you, you know, right. you can mix and you can move between the products the price sensitivity changes the narrative that people give on a cigar. So it may not be a bad cigar. It just may be bad for the price. Yeah. It may not be a good cigar. It may just, it, it may be a good cigar, may, but maybe it's just good for the price. Right. If you know what I mean. Do you think though, the pricing of cigars, like, I mean, we make fun of my CAO Brazilian Amazon, which is like five or $6 a, a stick. Um, I know the EGMs, Whatever, I, whatever that's 10 or 12, 15 US, $20 a stick. Do we think that for a lot of people that don't really know cigars, they just think if I spend a lot of money, like uh, on Opus X or on this or that, because I spent a lot of money, since they don't know, it's just good because I spent no, a mo- lot of money. Mo- 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 most, people, most, people, most people don't think like that way, but we have a word that describes people who think like that, and they're called posers. Right, we've right. got people. We've got people who who who. It's like the kind of people who used to buy Hugo Boss suit and leave the label on the on on the yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on, right. on the sleeve and say, "Oh, uh, now they just didn't know better. They just right. did not know how that was." Right. Right. Okay. Um. So 
there are plenty of young players, not necessarily sort of middle aged, but young players who like, oh, it's very fashionable to smoke a cigar. It's it's it is a fashion. It is a growing fashion to smoke a cigar. This okay. was like in the eighties again. In the eighties, yeah. it was fashionable. I have, but... I, I, but I've seen uh, in cigar lounges. I've seen people light up a cigar and they can't take it. and They leave half the cigar and they're gone. And, and yeah, I, you see the whole range. Of course, you see the whole range, especially if right. you if you fre frequent cigar lounges, right? But the the thing is, this I'm 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 putting it to you, journalists, aficionados, enthusiasts, beginners, old timers. Everyone is price sensitive. The only people that are not price sensitive are millionaires and billionaires. Or even no. millionaires are priced. But there, there are some people who like collecting cigars. They don't care how much money they pay. Right. Just like people collect wine, they put it in their cellar. They're never going to. They're never going to drink it. They're never going to sell it. Right? Okay. It's All just right. a. It's a hoarding mentality. Okay. But price sensitivity, I guarantee you, if you if you read reviews of cigars from now on, factor in that the person giving a very negative or very positive review has factored in the price much mm -hmm. more today than they did 20 years ago see i don't i don't factor in the price i just factor in do i like it fair point no but you factor in do you like it because the price you're sticking uh well i'm being slightly presumptuous you're sticking to a price where it doesn't really bother you so much if it's a bad cigar you spend 15 20 you throw away no big deal we'll move on to the next one but if you spent a hundred dollars on a stick and you didn't like it you would you would really be agitated I wasn't agitated on the Rocky Patel that I didn't like that I spent a hundred dollars a stick for. I just didn't, it didn't do anything for me. It had nothing to do with price. It could have been a $5 stick. It could have been $500. I just did didn't like it. Stick? It did nothing. Stick. You said stick. Stick. Well, the Marx Brothers <laughs> and I are having lunch later. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's the Jew. Um, but no, I, 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 it didn't matter the price. It was just, I just didn't, it just, there was nothing to it, to your point of where you always make a joke. It's just some dried leaves at that point. I was like, not impressed. Welcome to my world. Yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah, well, actually, both of you are going through UFOs today. I could see that. I yeah. could feel that, which is why you, you both, well, both of you, welcome to my world. Um, yeah. But, but okay, on, on the point when Raza, you said about the pricing and all that stuff, there's this very interesting conversation that has already sparked for the last almost two weeks now, uh, as Habano's, uh, well, Cigar Aficionado actually revealed that Habano's is coming up with a Behike 58 and a Behike 59, 59. next year right. for the 15th anniversary of Behike. Now, the fun factor is, and, and there was a poll done by a very, very renowned and a very good collector and a good cigar smoker, Lauren Views, uh, who runs his own channel by the name of Habano News, uh, as to would you buy a BK 58 or 59 or not? And the update or, or the result of that poll has been that 75% of the real cigar smokers have actually said, why do we need to have a 58 and a 59 one? Because they're right. two big in any case uh, and given the fact that 56 already is a big cigar now going to a 58 ring is like that's insane and right. 59 being a double figure order and all that stuff and also knowing that 56 already costs somewhere around 400 to 450 dollars if you're lucky uh, to find it at a reasonable price or at a reasonable place so why would you want to spend $500 or $600 for those cigars? Or would you be a... So most of the people have said, I would rather want that I am able to get a box of my cigars or half a box of my cigars that I can really smoke uh, guilt-free as compared to just buying one cigar, two cigars. Yes, I might buy one uh, for the novelty of it or for the collectability of it or just to have, oh, I have one kind right. of thing. But a, well, lot of people and a lot of cigar smokers and aficionados from Habano or, or, or Habano lovers are really kicked off right now uh, because of this insane pricing and this fad of coming up with all these fancy smokes, which are costing on an average of $70, $80, $90 dollars and above. Whereas all your daily smokes kind of things, which, were, which used to be your $10, $15, $20 or say to $30, have just kind of vanished. And if they are available, it's become a pain to find them. If polling, if polling was accurate, you'd get every election result right. 
you know what people say impulsively online, right? right. Is different to how they behave, to be very honest with you. But okay. the, no, and I'm not Reza, saying it's Reza, inaccurate. Reza, okay. Reza, the, the question is, you're a cigar smoker, right? You, I, in my opinion, you are, in, in my opinion, you are a cigar smoker more or a cigar aficionado than a cigar collector. I, well, I would, I would love to be termed and considered and uh, taken as a cigar smoker and a cigar lover rather than being considered as a cigar collector because I don't. I smoke right. cigars. Those 25% who wanted that, in my opinion, out of those 25%, 5-7% would be actually cigar smokers or cigar connoisseurs. Most of them will be collectors who would just collect it for the sake of the appreciation of the price. And uh, from, from that perspective, like people do in wines. So I think there's, there's, a, there's a different connotation to the whole context. And if, it is if, coming. If you put out a poll general to general public and say, well, we're talking about Rolls Royce, okay? Right? Would you buy a Rolls Royce? Most people say, no, I won't buy a Rolls Royce. I'll buy, you know, a Mercedes. I'll buy three Mercedes and a BMW. Okay. Right. right. It's an irrelevant question. It's a nice question, but it's irrelevant. It's got a kind of obvious why. Who, there's only a certain number of people who are going to spend 500, 600 pounds a stick. Asking the general public, you're kind of, you're, you're going to get an obvious answer. Whether it's seventy five percent, one hundred percent, fifty percent doesn't really make any difference. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. it, there are so many enthusiasts. I'm a car enthusiast. I'm I'm not. I can't afford to buy a Bugatti, but I love the Bugatti. I love the yeah. Koenigsegg. Right? You say, you know, of course, it's a ver it's a very distorted question. I think that these kind of product releases are there as champions of the industry, the aspirational. You know, there's the Rolls Royce model that everyone. Maybe if they got lucky one day would smoke or own or whatever, 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 whatever. That's all that meaning has. These are not relevant. If you talk about more relevant questions, I think the more relevant question is, is 50, 60, 70 pounds too much to pay for an everyday smoke? That's yes. a far more relevant question. In my, in my, in my, in my opinion, yes. and in, in, in London, for example, in London, right, uh, your average kind of semi-decent Cuban cigar starts at 45 pounds. This is fucking ridiculous. To be honest, it's fucking right. ridiculous. And Habanos or any of these pushers do not want you to ask those questions. People are going on about, oh, 600 pounds of cigars. It's an irrelevant question. Right. It's well, a, my, uh, uh, ir ir irrelevant, irrelevant in terms of analytics. The obvious answer, the obvious answer, what, are you going to get 100% of people saying, yes, let's have a 600 pound cigar? Who's going to smoke it? No my question. Okay, my, my question. What's the cost or what's the price of the cigar that you're smoking in London? So this cigar, K Dose 52, yes. is 48-ish pounds. Now, 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 may I tell you, entire Europe, the price for this cigar is somewhere between 24 to 28 euros. Now, yep, fine. right, right. So, 20, and, and, and if you're lucky to get it at any of the duty frees globally, you get it for somewhere around 22, 23 euros. Now, yep. 23 euros practically means 20 pounds. So, UK market is in any case irrelevant in, in, in the context you were talking because they are willing to pay two and a half times. I know, I know but in, I'm talking in terms of proportionality. In, I'm talking in terms of pro proportionality around the world. Okay. I, I, I know that the prices here are basically double of what you should pay, and more than double, maybe two and a half times. This I understand, right? Okay. Right. But but as a proportion around the world, right? Okay. If it's not, if it's not, if it's 600 pounds here, it's 300 or 400 dollars elsewhere, maybe 450. At least, at least, at least it's still, a, it's still, it's still, it's a still very, a very significant very spend, yes. Yes. which most people will not do. And most people, will say it's irrelevant, it's an irrelevant question to me. Yeah, it's great to have a Rolls Royce, but I'd never buy one. You know what I mean? It's great to have a Bugatti, but I'll never buy one. I might get a ride in one once, but that's about it. Right. But, and but, I, and but, I, but here's the thing, though. Even if you can afford those cars, it doesn't mean you're going to buy them. Thank you. There's a difference between nouveau riche and rich. 
And this is what people don't understand. Just because you have the money, that doesn't mean you're going to spend, well, maybe in London, because they, they want to show off five, 600 pounds a stick. That's ridiculous. I don't care how much money you have. Now, if you're a collector, I get it. A hundred years from now, your family's selling it. But it's just, to your point, it's just some dried leaves. Unless it's made and it's, oh my God, and you're going to have an orgasm while you're smoking it, it's still an expensive stick to purchase. And, you know, there's a quick way to go from billions to millions. You keep buying 500 pound sticks. You know, it's like the Steve Martin joke that he wrote. His joke was, I wrote a book on how to take a billion dollars into real estate and turn it in $25 into cash. You know, it's the same kind of premise at some point enough's enough. It's nice that now because we have crypto billionaires and this and that, and people that didn't really work for their money, like the guy who bought the banana for $6 million, uh, oh my so, but my point though is if you don't work for your money and you get it cause you got lucky, then you have no respect for your money. So whether you buy a $5 or five pound stick or you buy a 500 or 500 pound stick, it's not material because you have no respect for it. So every cigar I buy, whether it's five or six pounds of stick or whether it's 5,000 pounds of stick, or same with my scotch, whether it's $100 a bottle or $5,000 a bottle, I savor every second of it because I worked for the money that bought it. So there's a different mentality between nouveau riche, wealth, and rich. And it depends your, where your mentality is. No, but but go, going back to the survey that Usman um, was mm -hmm. referencing, we know, I mean, we're all on social media in one way or the other, right? We all know that when you talk about money and you talk about exclusive products, it's really about social media pushing. It's it's really about, you know, more likes, more followers, all that kind of crap, right? Yeah. But the, what I'm trying to say is one of the dialogues that I don't see, because maybe it's a plain vanilla dialogue, is the actual right. pricing of cigar just at a, at a main level, right? The conversation we're having now right. is a far more important relevant and i believe a, an attractive discussion you know uh there's no there's no real consumer advocacy in in this world right uh, okay. uh, you, uh you remember ralph nader and and yep. the, the sort of consumer advocacy and all that kind of stuff i think it's disaster i think it's a fucking shock it's to the system what we're paying for cuban cigars now mm -hmm. are we are we're not we're, we're not working charity we're not here to support cuba right we're here we're here because we like a product right Right. We like a product and we like and it's actually it's a it's a cottage industry product in ter in global terms. Uh, it kind of, uh, yeah, this this product only comes out of one valley in Cuba. As far as I know, I haven't been to Cuba. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's it's a it's a small factory business. Right. But by global standards, this is not Apple computers we're talking about. Right. right. And the inflation of the price is a very, very artificial inflation by people who've got their act together and their marketing together, right? Reasonable? Sure. Is that a, re a reasonable statement, right? Oh, yeah. And the brand ambassadors, people who are championing these, the, who are pimping these products, as far as I'm concerned, are pimping the price, in yes. my opinion. that That's all they're doing. I, the part of the industry I totally resent is them pimping a price, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, $10 hookers for $200 a night, you know, that kind right, of thing. Right. That's how I see, honestly, that's how I see them. I have no fucking gripes about things like that. Um, but I say, I say I'm a customer. I'm not in the industry. I can say what I want. If people mm -hmm. want to cancel me, they want to cut me out, no problem. I'll, I'll go smoke somewhere else. I'll smoke something else. They're just right. dried leaves, right? Yeah. Okay, but my enjoyment is of a certain product from a certain place. I resent the pricing totally. Let me say that. And I think that is a real dialogue. When, right. when we're not going up against uh, America or or Russia where we would get cancelled. This is just a fucking product. That's all it is. Right. From, time, from time to time, when I go on these rants about dried leaves in paper bands, in wooden boxes, in my head, I'm just trying to keep it, I'm keep trying to keep my perspective real as to right. what I've just paid 50 pounds for. Right, right. right. You, right. you understand, right? Yeah. And that's a very, very real conversation. Get these fucking social media people and Instagrammers to talk about things like that. They won't, because they're all pussies. Right. They're well, because they'll, pussies. Get they'll, get, they'll get canceled, and their fans don't... They, they, yeah. they sell. Yeah. Wearing, they don't wearing, sell. Stu wearing, wearing, wearing stupid hat and stupid glasses, yeah, to sell right. cigars, fine, do it, yeah? No problem. But if you want to talk about real core things, journalistically, right. if you want... So, so, for example, in this case... I take Aaron Sigmund's point, but I, I'm strongly, strongly suggest that what he's doing 
he's saying, where is the bang for buck on this cigar? Right. That's, I, I think that is a big factor. I could be wrong. Yes. But if that was a $20 stick, we're talking back uh, uh, about the, the Dunhill Year of the Snake, then right. that, that is an excellent cigar for that money. It's an Correct. excellent cigar. For, the fact that it's priced much, much higher kind of takes it out of the range of being called excellent. It's just, you know. It's a cigar. It's a cigar. The problem is, yeah. is though, they're trying to make this, which it really isn't. They're trying to make this luxury thing out of it. And if they go back to when yeah, it started, the old school the world, thing. it was the old school guys, whether they smoked like, you know, the dime store cigars or they, you know, the Dutch masters or they smoked whatever, they smoked cigars for the enjoyment and for, if you will, the brotherhood of it. It wasn't a luxury product. It wasn't like, oh, you smoke cigars. Yeah. Now it's like, it's, it's like, totally oh. Artificially, totally artificial. Right. Totally when artificial. I, back in the 80s when I started, I remember cigars became all the craze. Like everybody on Wall Street was smoking. And it was like, oh, cigars, cigars, cigars. And I was like, yeah, you're, you're good for a few years. And then you're just going it, to, it's like, it's not, it's not a passion for you. It's like, it's a cool thing. So a lot of the thing they're doing, it's like, oh, we have all these nouveau riche people. They're stupid. Let's have them spend money. And what do they do? They spend money. Okay. And if I'm the cigar, if I'm the Cuban brand or I'm an American brand, if you will, with Dominican stuff, and I can get you to spend instead of, Twelve dollars a stick. I can get you to spend a hundred dollars a stick. My profit margin and the retailer's profit margin is huge. Are you kidding? All day long. So, but the people don't think that. They're like, look how cool I am. So, it's part of the conversation on one of the hearths was, where do you enjoy it? Where do I enjoy smoking my cigar? By myself, yes. because I don't have to show off for any. I can smoke whatever I want, whether it's a, my CAO or whether it's a more expensive stick or now it'll be EGMs. I don't have to show off for anybody. And now when I'm out with people, I buy the sticks I like, still not showing off. I mean, I just, this is what I like. This is what I smoke. And that's it. And I that don't brings, care about the hype. And, and, that, and that brings me, well, that brings this conveniently back to the EGM. For ba bang for buck. It's a decent right. cigar. It's a good looking go. cigar. It's a good looking lifestyle brand. It's, mm -hmm. I, I think I'm not wrong in saying you heard, you didn't have to hear it here first, but I think you have, that's the future. In my opinion, that's the future. I, I think I, I saw quite um, openly, I saw, well, actually, that's where the cigar world is going. Yeah. Um, the Cubans uh, will either outprice or reset. They'll either Hopefully outprice reset. or reset. I, I, I doubt they would reset, but no, yeah. they'll just outprice. And they, they, would, they would outprice and they would be like Uber Luxury or, or they would be like. Well, no, Uber Luxury is Mirafell. Uh, which we won't oh, talk about. My 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 apologies. Yes, there you go. Right. So so on that note. Yes. On that, on that note, uh, the the thing that I wanted to talk about is the next week. Yes. The next week. Yes. The next week is going to be uh, a very very interesting week, okay. as yes. the year is coming to an end, and Habanos is bringing the year of the Trinidad to its uh, closure. For the for the cigar smokers and the uh, Cuban cigar lovers, this year was kind of the year of the Trinidad uh, with its 55th anniversary uh, being celebrated this year, from 1969 to uh, 2024. The right. first event was and the first introduction was the cigar or the reintroduction was the Trinidad Robustos Extra that they brought in back in regular production. Uh, we are yet to see the boxes uh, in regular production, but yes, they've brought them back. So uh, those cigars are now in, uh, I mean, going to be available soon. Uh, and and the second of that was in July when they had the Habanos World Days, where in addition to the Trinidad Robustos Extra, they came up with the first limited edition for 2024 as Trinidad Cabildos. Uh, which was done for the UK market as a special uh, box, which was the premiere edition of the Cabildos. Uh, and, and that was the three days of uh, 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 celebrations in, in London, uh, celebrating the 55th anniversary. And with the closure next week, uh, there is going to be a global event, uh, which is now being done by Phoenicia, the second biggest distributor for Habanos. And that is going to be an event in Doha, Doha Convention Center, on the 7th of December. 
Yes. Uh, and 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 uh, Habanos lovers uh, from across the world are gathering. And and next Saturday is the event. So yeah. uh, so so I would definitely join in in the show of our live show uh, next week. But that would be a short one because I would. There's the timings are as such that I would soon after the show would have to pop in for the event as I would be there uh, attending the event. Uh, okay. so, so for our fans, there would be a lot of live updates and a lot of uh, snippets coming from that event uh, okay. that we will be putting up here and on my um, Instagram handle, which is uh, written here, as well as Cigar Keep and the uh, YouTube channel. Cigar Guy PK. So um, do stay in touch and and do look out for that, big as we as we uh, savor the uh, official boxes of uh, the Trinidad Cabildos, which are going to be in the in in the format of twelve cigars a box, which is the Trinidad format primarily, as compared to just the only Premier Edition five sticks a box, which was launched earlier this year. So, so the next weekend is going to be a very interesting and, and a happening one. Very cool. So now, remember, you can always just you know walk around live and just show everybody stuff and interview people. Feel free. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We, gave, we gave you all the codes. So mm -hmm. very cool. Well, gentlemen, this was a, a very fun absolutely. show. Yeah. This is one of our uh, this is one of our exciting shows. I hope the fan enjoyed them. Uh, and there you absolutely. go. So, and the next show is in December. The year is gone. Oh, yes, sir. The year is gone. The year is gone. And before you know it, it'll be 2025. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And how is everybody? Sp I will tell you my, my Drew Estate smoke, um, mm -hmm. the uh, the feral here. It, I had to do a couple of relights, but I will oh, say okay. that it, it has a nice flavor. It had a, mm -hmm. it has a good burn. Um, and I was, for, for, for a non-Cuban, um, not a bad smoke. I don't know. I've, I'd probably have to smoke a couple more to tell you if I love it or not. And I'm not sure how I got it, but it was in my uh, humidor. So I said, oh, let me smoke something different because everybody complains I smoke the same three cigars. So I figured mm -hmm. I would smoke something different. So there you go. So not a bad smoke. Kudos to Drew Estates. The, the, the relighting, is that because of the weather and the temperature outdoors? Mm -hmm. Or is it because of the extra humidity? What do you think? Um, a little bit of both, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm not blaming. I'm not, the relights. I'm not like, oh my god, it, it's a terrible thing. I think one because it's, it's, it's literally three or four Celsius right now outside. Yeah, that's, that's so that I'm has thinking. that has a lot to do with the relights, but the flavor, yeah. the smoke, for for and Drew Estate makes a good. I like the Drew Estate ones, and I've smoked a few of those. Um, a good smoke. So I don't know what it cost. So if to Drew Estates, once again, kudos to you on, on the Feral. Very good cigar. Very my, proud. My, my Tuberon was a very, oh very good God. smoke. It, it, it's almost <laughs> almost towards the end. You see uh, that. And and it was it was a really, I mean, as I said, bang for buck. Uh, yeah. very pleasurable smoke. And and I think a great job done by uh, EGM cigars in yeah. bringing these Dominican Puros to the cigar smokers. And EGM, I should have hopefully here this coming week. So for the next six weeks, I'll be smoking a new EGM every show. Um, so that'll be fun. Looking forward to that. And Riza, how was your cigar? Um, I, I, I've smoked quite a lot of these k say 52s uh, in the last three or four months. They're uh -huh. kind of delivering. It's a really, really good. Yeah, um, yeah, very good. They're really good cigars. They're really good cigars. I had one last night and, and I must say they're very good. Especially, very nice. uh, especially the size of the cigar, the pricing of it, yeah. and all of that. Uh, I think it's it's a good cigar. It's a very good cigar it and, is, a good addition, and a good addition to the Kedor Sevitolario. Uh, to my liking, I've started to like it more than the Kedor Se Fifty Four, which okay. I really. Like. But I think this Fifty Two slightly uh, shorter ringage than the Fifty Four. Yeah, and but longer in length. Yeah, I've started to like it more as compared to the 54. Very cool. Well, gentlemen, that does it. Thank you to all the fans that are watching, whether yeah. they watched live or they watch it re rebroadcasted later today. Um, yeah. We will see everybody next Saturday. Usman, 
will be in Doha. He's just showing off. He's really going to be in Pakistan. They're just going to put a fake background up. Um, please, and don't, a, please, don't, please don't curse it like Reza does it every time. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And, and, and Reza will still be in London. Uh, be going between Cavendish and Tom Tom and, you know, yeah, smoking yeah, yeah. around so, London. So. In Reza's case, I've given up hope. Yes, so, yeah. one day. He'll show up one day. One day. So yeah. there we go. Gentlemen, it's always a pleasure to see both of you. Thank you very much. Risa, try not to disengage when we go <laughs> out there. All right. This, yeah. you know, we'll have a little follow up. Just saying, because we miss you. We want to talk to you. Yeah, just hang out for a second. It's okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought that's what we figured. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, he, he, he's like, go, go, go ahead. Go, go, go. No, no, go, go. Say, say. I was just going to say he's kind of he's kind of like the little brother you you want to just duct tape and put him in the trunk. But go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, well, before we go on, uh, please, if you have not subscribed to the show, subscribe, like, and do share it, uh, and and do share your feedback. Please. Cheers, Is that everyone. it, gentlemen? We good? All right, good. we're good. Har Harpo has nothing yeah. to say. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you all next week. It's Thank you.